So I've been between 12 and 13% body fat for the last couple years at least. Effortlessly, I'll put it that way. It feels that way to me. And I wanted to share some secrets behind that for inquiring minds because I'll be real. I'm like, I think a lot of people would like to be where I'm at. It's a good place, <laughs> a real good place. Um, and one thing that I've learned, if you've ever been around somebody who has results in their life that you don't have and you've actually been able to spend time with them, you'll see that there's little things that they do differently that you hadn't thought about. And I'm sharing with you in this video what some of those little things are. I've really thought about this because I don't track my food. I'm not a perfectionist with food. I eat stuff sometimes that is not <laughs> perfect. I eat as much as I want. I eat to satiety. And I've been staying this lean for years on end. And I've really thought about this. I'm like, what is actually the biggest hitters contributing? So here we go. The first thing, absolutely, without a doubt, is my sleep. So, I made a post recently about how it used to be really hard, and it is hard when you're going from standard American diet like I was. Like guys, I used to live off of McDonald's, Taco Bell, Wendy's, you know, macaroni and cheese with my kids, white bread, brownies, chips, soda, Kool-Aid even, okay? So if you're coming from that lifestyle and going into a whole new lifestyle, that's hard. But even once, once I got into that lifestyle, it just felt really hard for a long time. And I know now that one of the biggest reasons is because I hadn't let go of my subconscious fear of losing it. And so I was like high strung all the time, like overly focused on it, scared, right? Which would, led to restrictive mindsets, which led to overeating and binging and over exercising and not sleeping enough and all of these things. And when I started to let go of that fear and I stopped worrying about it so damn much, I also at the same time finally got my sleep a priority. And what I mean by this is I had a consistent bedtime. I've had this now for the last, I don't know, two years or so. And that's equal to the amount of time that I've been staying lean feeling somewhat effortlessly. If you go to bed at all sorts of different times, it's gonna be hard all the time. And especially if you're sleep depriving yourself. So that getting my bedtime like a little toddler in check is probably the biggest piece of this, maybe equally matched with the next one. And that is intermittent fasting. So, for me, the, the key to intermittent fasting is ending your eating earlier. <laughs> I honestly don't care what time you start eating. And some of you guys who are dealing with hypothyroidism or adrenal fatigue or your body's already kind of on edge, you might want to eat earlier. Or your cortisol and adrenals are just going to be like, Meow. I don't really have that issue going on with me. So, I typically don't eat for a while after I wake up. So my adrenals are healthy, so I'm using them to my advantage in my workouts, okay? I'm using that adrenaline boost you'll get when you're fasted to my advantage in my workouts. So, but pretty much just whenever I start feeling hungry, after my workout, I just eat. And then I prioritize protein, fiber, real food as much as possible, with some exceptions of not perfect stuff. And then I just eat whenever and however much I damn well please during the day. Note that in the beginning of the day, there was a workout, a hard ass workout, <laughs> usually. Sometimes not. Sometimes my body needs a little more recovery, so I might just walk a little, take it a little easier, do some rehab work. But most of the time, because I don't eat before bed and I go to bed about the same time every night and I get really good sleep, I'm pretty damn recovered by the next day. So I did my workout, I included walking like this for on a short day, 20 minutes on a good, well, I shouldn't say good, but a typical day, maybe up to an hour. Mm -hmm. And I just work on my phone. So that's a lot of walking. And then I'll hit pretty short 
weights workout, but I go intense as hell. Maybe 30, 40 minutes max. Depends on how focused I'm being. Okay, so let's backtrack. Bedtime is consistent. Bedtime is consistent. For, for the most part, I'm a human. Like every once in a while, it's not. But for the most part. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Peace. Go to bed. Sleep well. Wake up. Meditate. Do my morning routine. Check in on a few things in my business. Bounce to the gym. Hit it. Walk. Hit it hard. And I just freaking eat. Whenever I damn well please. And sometimes I eat a lot. I got a lot of muscle. So... <laughs> whatever. I also have a cycle. So second half of my cycle, I'm hungrier. I just eat. If I'm not as hungry, I just don't eat. And that's how it goes. And prioritizing protein, fiber, healthy food, blah, 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 as much as possible with some wiggle room to eat some suboptimal things, but I just don't really want to eat those things very much because I don't like how they make me feel. Okay. Rinse and repeat. But that's sleep. And the intermittent fasting, last thing I'll share in intermittent fasting, you know about Dr. Sachi and Panda's circadian rhythm research, right? If you don't know about this, you need to know about this. They had mice in two groups, fed them the same amount of calories, just same, are we hearing this? Same food, exact same food, exact same amount of food. No change on that. Half the rats were time-restricted eating, which is intermittent fasting. Half are mice, I think it was mice. And half of them could eat whenever they wanted. At the end of the study, the ones that had the time-restricted eating were metabolically healthy, all of them. And the ones that ate whenever they damn well pleased had all sorts of problems, obesity, disease, blah, 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 blah. Why? I think it's really simple their bodies could not repair properly at night during sleep. And so that is what motivates me to intermittent fast and eat my, end my eating earlier. It's not to be skinny. They, that is zero. If that was my motivation, I'd probably eat late at night a lot. Really? Because I'd be like, oh, I don't care about being skinny right now. Right? That's not my motivation. My motivation is I want to feel amazing when I wake up tomorrow. And yes, I'm a little hungry right now, but I know if I just go to sleep, my body will be able to repair so well during sleep. I'm gonna feel so good tomorrow and I don't wanna ruin that. That's what motivates me. And if you eat late at night, you're just, you're gonna stay up so much later because now you just put some energy in your body or distracted with the whole eating thing. Now you're gonna sit down in front of your laptop or TV, blah, 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 blah. Just freaking go to sleep. Nothing that really builds your life is gonna happen in that window. So just freaking train yourself like a toddler to go to bed. I would say this is one of the main problems that people are facing in terms of not being able to be where they wanna be in their health is they need to mom themselves. They need to be their own mom at night and be like, no, you're good. Go to bed. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think they got all sorts of emotional eating problems. They're just tired. You just need to go to bed. You just need to pattern that in. And then like, yeah, there is some deeper work a lot of times of like, I have to do all of these things and I barely have time or blah, blah, blah. Just rearrange your life so that you, you make time in the morning to do that stuff when you're fresh, because you know you're not doing a good job of it late at night anyway. When is my eating window? It just really depends. Um, typically, I wait till I get hungry, right? So typically it's gonna be somewhere around like 11, 10 sometimes in the morning. And then it really just depends how much I ate towards the end of the day. Like if I had like had a ton of food by like four, I might be done then. Sometimes I just, the way life went, it might be later that day, like six. But it takes about five hours for food to digest, typically. Depends on your motility, right? But think about that if you're ending your eating at eight. Now you're not done digesting till midnight. So even if you're doing a good job going to bed at nine, 
your body can't enter repair mode well. <sighs> so you can wake up feeling freaking good if you'll stop eating so close to bedtime. Do I take any vitamins? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a biohacker. <laughs> we, oh no, holistic health coach. I take all sorts of stuff, but I can't really, people always ask, what do you take? It doesn't matter what I take. The question is, what do you need? And it's best to test and not guess because there's a lot of supplements out there. You might not really need some of them and there might be some that you need really bad. So invest in a naturopathic doctor, a functional medicine doctor, a functional nutritionist or health coach like me get some lab testing done find out what you actually need and yeah do I believe most people need to supplement absolutely you're living in la la land if you're thinking you're getting everything you need through food these days it's just not reality I wish it was I have been to a regenerative farm in Ohio where they are testing the minerals and foods from the grocery store and then their own because they're trying to get really on top of this. Organic food from the grocery store, like almost none of a lot of the minerals that it's supposed to have a lot of. So you are living in La La Land if you think you don't need to supplement these days. That's not the world we live in. But you don't really know unless you test and get some lab work done. Um, when, what time do I stop eating and what time do I go to bed? So like I said, anywhere between four and six and then I go to bed at nine. So it, that's why I don't really like to eat at six, but sometimes life happens, but it's usually more like four. Um, how many grams of protein do you recommend? <laughs> the loaded question. You know, the longer you go as a coach and working with people, the more you have the annoying answer of it depends. <laughs> and you get a lot less dogmatic as you're getting all up in people's gut microbiomes and blood labs and organ function and all of these things. But, you know, in an ideal world for somebody who everything's running optimally, they have amazing digestion, organs are running well, I would recommend at least one, at least one gram, at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight, anywhere between 30 and 40% of your total calories, if you can digest it. Because guess what, if you can't, <laughs> now you're creating a bunch of um, inflammation, I'll put it that way, toxicity, toxic gases and things in your gut. So if you're eating a lot of protein and you're like, oh, bloated, stomach hurts, all that stuff, you need to find out what's going on in your gut and you can, you know? So that's why it's hard for me to say because I'm like, what if somebody listening has like a horrible ability to break down proteins? And I'm like, at least 1.2 grams of protein. And they're like, wow, my health just went down dramatically. Thanks, Tara. <laughs> so if you really want to know, invest in yourself and find out, you know. So yeah, I'll take any more questions if you guys want to. Oh, hi, Sylvia. Good to see you. Thank you. Hope you had fun in Italy. What's up, yo yo games? <laughs> See, Johan, he's an awesome coach out in Utah. All right, so yeah, wrapping it up. Letting go of the fear that drives you to need to get shit done at night. You know, stay up late because it's your only alone time. Watch a bunch of Netflix, eat food, blah, blah, blah. It's just like ruining your health. Move that time in the morning, let go of the fear. Just go to sleep. I like to say game over. I, when I was patterning this in, I would say game over, girlfriend. Try again tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so try that out. Um, what's usually my last meal? So there's a reason I don't have any of those what I eat in a day videos. I've been asked like five billion times and I know they're really popular on social media. But I'm like, how could I ever... How could I, I just eat so differently every day. I mean, I, I live off principles, not specific foods. So I'm always looking for very protein rich. I have very good digestion, so I can handle some freaking protein. So protein, is, I always think, what's my protein here? I wanna be heavy on that, and then some healthy carbs and fats in addition to that, right? But it's so different. Last night I had like a, 
the kind of burrito bowl thing. My kids are having burritos. I just had like a bowl of the meat and beans and salsa and I added some cottage cheese for some more protein. But like, I don't eat that every day, I, you know? So it's really hard for me to say, but those are the principles if that helps. How's Hawaii, we miss you up here in Utah. The weather's getting cooler. Man, it's good out here. I definitely miss Utah. It's a little, it's definitely some culture shock. I miss, you know, friends. <laughs> but my sister's coming out this weekend for all next week, so that'll be good. But yeah, it's, it's freaking beautiful here. I mean, it's Hawaii. Um, how long do I fast for? So the way I think of it is this, I stop eating at least a few hours before bed. At least a few hours before bed. I mean, every once in a while, I'm out and about and went to a concert or I don't know. God, I feel like shit the next day when I wake up after I eat late. It's so eye-opening once you stop doing that and then you do it, it's like, oh, oh. Um, so yeah, and then wake up, meditate, morning routine, work out, wait till I get hungry, pound food all day. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. That's it. Sums it up. All right, guys. I'll go ahead and close this up. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully, you got some value out of that. Oh shit. Okay, real quick. Somebody asked if I eat low carb, and then if opinion on keto. <laughs> you must be new to new wish to following me. So I was a huge part of the keto movement. I'd say you know I was definitely all up in that. And in 2018, I won't say I'm, I'm not trying to get myself credit. I'm just saying I was very involved in the keto movement. Um, in 2018, I started to see a lot of dogma in that industry. And so I created a program called keto in and out and a little mantra do keto, not forever because the ketogenic diet is incredibly awesome for the people who need it. And for possibly most people who want to give their metabolism a, a reboot and be able to utilize ketones well, you know, um, but there was so much dogma of like keto is better and carbs are for stupid people who only run on sugar and like it was just that. And I was like, no. <laughs> and so um, I was strict keto for a year, brought carbs back in, really grateful for my keto phase, but man, everything went boom after doing keto and re bringing carbs back in after. I share all about that in my book. It's called Short Term Keto. And the introduction has my DEXA scans pictures, all of that of my whole keto journey, and then all the science behind why you might want to try keto, what happens, like what happens in your gut and your neurotransmitters and all that, and then why and when you might bring carbs back in, and then what happens, and how do you match your training to that, and blah, blah, blah. So that's what my book is, Short Term Keto. It's on Amazon and all the things. You can go to shorttermketo.com and get a freebie with that if you would like. Um, and then do I eat low carb? I don't try to eat low carb. I would say compared to the typical American, I probably do because I eat mostly real carbs and not processed carbs. <laughs> if you're eating vegetables, tubers, and fruits, you'd probably be considered low carb and beans and maybe some occasional rice. You know? You're probably eating a lot less carbs than the typical American, but no, uh, um, when you're not keto, you don't need as much fat. That's a, I kind of like, filled this space in the nutrition world for a minute when keto was kind of peaking and coming out of its peak where I was helping a lot of people come off keto. So I've been one-on-one -on -one with a lot of people through that journey. And one of the biggest stumbling blocks people face is they got, maybe they lost a hundred pounds on keto, right? Or it was really great for them or whatever. And they got this belief system that carbs are bad and fat is good and so then when they don't need to do keto anymore because I'm a firm believer that unless it's healing something in your body you're using it as a therapeutic tool like you have epilepsy or Parkinson's or something or type 2 that just can't fully be healed then unless that I don't believe people need to be keto forever I don't believe it's optimal for people to be keto forever and so um, one of the biggest barriers people face is they aren't keto anymore, but they still eat a lot of fat. And if you're not in ketosis, you're not in actual ketosis, meaning you're producing blood ketones. So now you're in a carb burning system in your body and you're just piling on fat. You are probably going backwards in your metabolic health and you're going to gain weight and feel like shit. 
so super common. So once you're not keto anymore, you don't really need that much fat. You need fat, definitely need fat, okay? Healthy fats, but it's gonna feel so little after being keto because fat is really calorically dense. Um, how many hours is my intermittent fast? Last, uh, what did I answer that already? It's just typically about eight hours, sometimes shorter. Um, all right, I think that's pretty much it, guys. All right, just drop in uh, comments if you guys have any more questions. All right, that's all, guys. Bye.